This is an appeal that was filed regarding the decision of the Historic Preservation and Planning Commission related to a request made by the property owner to demolish a structure located at 200 Railway Avenue. It is not a hearing to consider what may eventually be constructed in the property or should the structure be demolished. I would appreciate that public comment or testimony be limited to the matter that is on appeal tonight before the BCA. Next, I'd like to introduce Chris Voynich to introduce the background of the appeal that was filed. Yeah, um, in, your, in your packet, and uh, we'll publish, publish in the agenda packet, uh, we talk about the appeal and what was put forth. This is case number 2024-03, uh, 200 Railroad Avenue. Um, this was an appeal application that was filed by a city of Loveland resident. Uh, Ms. Deidre Hazelbaker of 101 Ash Street, Ash Street, Loveland, Ohio, seeking reconsideration of the Historical Preservation and Planning Commission decision of Certif Certificate of Appropriateness 2024-6. Um, that's, that's what's before us today. Um, just a little background on it, um, how we got here. Um, on June 26, 2024, um, during an open forum uh, in, in HPPC hearing. They were presented with preliminary plans for a six-unit residential development um, at 200 Railroad. Um, these were brought forth by Infuse Holdings. Um, these were simply brought to the commission um, as a, as a um, opportunity for them to get feedback from the commission. Uh, we suggested at a staff level when they met with us that it would be a good idea to introduce themselves to the, to the commission and to kind of get a temperature of the room for what they were, um, you know, looking at for something in the future. Um, and then recent, more recently, um, they were at the last HPPC meeting, as you know, um, to approach them about demolition of the existing building, or the existing home that is there. That was on October 2nd, 2024. Um, that building is an existing 1,733 square foot, one story duplex. Uh, once again, located at 200 Railroad Avenue. Um, at that point, um, the HPPC, they listened to the <coughs> applicant and they had much discussion. And at that point, um, they entertained a vote and they voted to approve of the demolition of that structure. And that is where we are today and with the appeal the appeal in the uh, in front of the BCA today. Mr. Chairman, um, the city would like to be heard on a procedural matter. Okay, Mr. Brown. Um, on behalf of On behalf of the city, I would like to make a motion to dismiss case number 2024 03 for lack of standing. The appellant, either Hazel Baker, fails to satisfy the standing requirements that are laid out in section 111.10a of the local code of ordinances, and she cannot demonstrate that she has suffered her own injury, in fact, that is different or in any way unique from any other resident of Loveland that would grant her standing to be able to file this appeal. As such, it should be dismissed for a lack of standing. A review of the basic facts demonstrate that she cannot prove she has standing. Ms. Hagelbaker did not file the original application before the Loveland Historical Preservation and Planning Commission seeking a certificate of appropriateness for the demolition of the house. The house at issue is not owned by Ms. Hagelbaker. It is owned by an entity known as Infuse Holdings LLC. To the best of my knowledge, Ms. Hagelbaker is not a member of Infuse Holdings LLC, and she does not own property within 300 feet of the subject property. Instead, she filed this appeal of the commission's decision of the granting of the certificate of appropriateness as a third party. The Ohio Supreme Court has found that third party standing is disfavored and only applicable in very limited circumstances. And based on the elements that I just listed, she does not satisfy that standard. If you refer to section 1111.10a, it lays out who is eligible to file an appeal before the BCA. 
and there is not standing in this case, so I would submit that it should not move forward and should be dismissed. So this time, Ms. Hayes Baker, would you like to comment? Yeah. Um, I'm disappointed with how this um, was handled with the um, allowing for the, I filed on behalf of the agent, which I confirmed with multiple people in, in, of the community, and that means I'm filing on the back half of the community as checking agent. And I also have made calls to the city and tried to confirm the process and was told that they didn't know the process and they would look into it but could not guide me. And then I was directed to Joe Braun um, and was also con get considered that same. And so I feel as though the, the city is not doing their due diligence to ensure that, that the community has a voice to be heard. You can see by attendance, you can see by attendance in the first meeting and the second meeting and those that have been voiced to make a process so complicated that the regular citizen cannot figure out how to file and make their voice heard on behalf of the city is unacceptable. And so I am a little emotional right now because I did work tired of the hours. My kids are here with me today because I am a mother. I have a full-time job and I still felt that this was so important to the community because of the amount of comments and stories and letters that have been received. So I do hope that you will um, still at least hear the open forum and consider the appeal still be heard and sent back to the historic commission. Um, I think, do you want to allow the respondent first? The, 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 the respondent's counsel, I think, have to respond first. Okay. Um, can you put your name? Uh, Matt Kern. Um, we got to use Paul Benz. Uh, you got to spare Paul Benz, correct? No. Um, we would just make our own motion to dismiss based on standing.
Mr. Ron, so just a recap as a more layman term. So you, in order to uh, appeal, you need to be the actual property owner, live within 300 feet of the property, or be a officer of the park board of the area of the city concerning the city. That's what the code reads. Was the HPP unanimous in their decision? No. No. I don't know. It was a split board, I believe. Yeah, so the, the vote in the HPPC hearing was three to two. <laughs> Oh! 